Hello and welcome to Tika Chips Lab. Today I got another one from my uh, recent score of old ancient multimeters. Um, this time we have again a Hartmann and Brown. This is a Multavi 7. In one of the last episodes we took a look at the Multavi 2, which is this one. Um, but this is a, a really just, but this is a, a far more recent model as, uh, as the Multavi 2, which was from around the 1940s. This one is from the early 70s. Um, as you can see, we have again a volt and an amp meter, but this time we can also measure ohms. So we can measure the resistance of components which is quite handy and um, so you can use this multimeter in everyday use in your lab if you want to. This is particularly possible if you take a look at the technical data which is for its age again quite impressive as we have a precision of just 1% from the end of the scale in DC and 1.5% of the end of the scale from um, every uh, AC of every AC measurement if you measure 50 Hertz sine wave. So 1.5% is perfectly perfectly usable in everyday lab work um, and as those meters are quite cheap to get on eBay today for someone who doesn't have that much money, I guess this would be a much better way to go than to choose one of those cheapy um, Chinese meters from like AliExpress or something like that. So I guess this would be the way to go. The Hartmann and Brown Multi 7 is, as I already said, capable of measuring AC and DC for volts and amps. Quite interesting is the layout of the range switch. I zoom in a bit here. You can see that the volts and amps ranges are alternating. So you see we have amps for alternating current and volts for alternating current and also amps for direct current and volts for direct current. This is particularly useful if you want to measure volts and amps by only using one meter because we have a common positive we have a volt and an amp terminal so you could connect your amps to whatever you want and uh, measure the voltage drop above what you are measuring uh, your amps at and if you want to know how much current is flowing, just switch to amps and if you want to know how much of a voltage drop is occurring right now, you can just switch to voltage without disconnecting anything at all. This is really useful if you want to go with just one meter instead of having two meters on your desk. Um, as this one is it's quite chunky and heavy, <laughs> this is a really useful feature, I would say. Um, compared to the much older uh, Multavi 2, it is just, uh, I would say, it's around uh, 5 centimeters longer and one and a half centimeters more in width, but <laughs> in height it is around, oh, it's around the same, but it's much lighter than the old one. Um, you have to keep in mind that uh, since it is a meter which is able to read the uh, resistance of your components, you have to use a, what is that? Ah, um, you have to use a battery or some kind of energy source. In this particular meter, it looks like it is just a C cell. We take a look at this in a few moments. But as we already can read, the ohms range seems to be damaged somehow. 
as this says in German, uh, the ohms is kind of... How do you say it? It is... <laughs> it's, it's damaged. Whatever. So, let's get... Uh, idiots. Let's get rid of this. And I guess we should take a look inside. This seems to be particularly more easy than on the older one, as we have two very big screws protruding from the back side. Uh, and again, we have a kind of micro user manual printed directly on the back. If you are able to read German, you can pause at any moment and take a look at it. It is quite nice to see that they wanted you to be able to operate it even if you don't understand what you are doing and <laughs> even if you have no time to read an own owner's manual. So they printed all the necessary information right on the back. Oh yay! This is so much more information. Uh, okay, let's get rid of this old battery, which is actually really a C cell. And I try to get into it, but it has those really, really annoying screw heads. I don't know if you can see it. Yes, it is. It is more like this is a nut, what you can see, with a bolt sticking out of it. So you have you have the nut, and oh wait, this is going to be wrong. So let's try to loosen this somehow, because I really want to take a look inside, as this meter has some really interesting ways of protecting itself. Oh wait. I guess I have something. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can find what we are looking for. Oh yes, oh yes. This looks promising. This would be promising if this bolt wouldn't be so damn long. Try a bigger one. Mm, yes, this is going to fit. Why is this one smaller than the others? I don't get it. Now I got it. Stupid thing. I see why it's small as <laughs> someone seems to have lost one of those stupid security nuts. Here you can see one of those again. You see this just around slitted nut. And someone lost it and just used a regular hex nut and uh, made some grooves into it. Interesting. Interesting piece of history. So let's get this out. And I guess we are in. Oh, and by the way, um, here you can see the fuse holder. As I said, it, is, it has some nice protection features, which we will see hopefully inside. But it had, has also a regular glass fuse with 6.3 amps for the amperage ranges. Because the internal electrical protection mechanism would, <laughs> would only kick in at 120 amps if you choose the highest amperage range on the meter. 
So this is just like a, uh, it's more like a last hope for the instrument not to get burned. So let's take a look. This is actually quite unpopulated. I would have I would have guessed that there's much more in it. Since if you remember our first Hartmann and Brown Multiavi, which was really packed with stuff, um, here they really they didn't put in that much at all. But that had, does not necessarily mean that it is bad. So we're going to take a look at all. Here we have the protection mechanism, uh, which I already stated. It is actually a uh, high current relay switching the meter off if there is any kind of over um, if there's any kind of overload on the actual meter itself. Um, so it it connects to this red button which is a kind of uh, reset function and I'm going to try to operate it manually so that we can see what it is doing if there is any kind of overload if I find the way where I have to press to operate it. Let's see. Ah, found it. Yeah, found it and I see that the... Ah, ah, there it goes. Yep, yeah, there it goes. So, I zoom in a bit. As you can see, if I press this reset switch, this it is operating the whole mechanical assembly. Well, I'm not pressing it completely so you can see it. This lever is pressing the contacts together here. Here on it's quite hard to see on camera here we have a really really huge I guess it's not gold plated. No it's not. We have a really huge massive contact. I can kind of see it down there. Um, which connects the meter to the uh, corresponding posts. And if there is a overload, it is just actuating the co coils, which will then activate this mechanical assembly switching off. And as you can see, there is a, a huge gap between the... Uh, how am I going to show it? Wait a minute. At this point, it's ah, there, yeah, yes, there we're going. Here you can see the actual contact on the one side, and the other contact is right here. So there is a huge gap. It's this around, I would say it's around two centimeters between the two contacts. So it is easily able to break even the highest voltages, which this meter can. Accept. So let's take a few more looks around. At this area here, we have some wire around shunt resistors. I guess they seem to be at a specific custom length for prepare for the actual purpose they are having here. It is really it's just shunts made from copper wire. Um, we are going from a little small shunt here to a slightly thicker one. It's more thicker again. And here we have a big beefy 
current shunt, I guess this is the one for the 6 amps range. And this is going, yes, this is for 6 amps. This is going by this yellow cable right to the fuse holder. If we take a look at this area of the printed circuit board, we can see some kind of transformer. I don't actually know what it is for. Um, since there are many, many layers of wire in different thicknesses, here we have a rather thick wire, here's uh, even much more thicker, and on this side we have two windings of really, really thin wire. And I have no idea what they are doing with this transformer. Check out this nice switch assembly. As you can see, all the traces are completely covered with gold. It's a little gold plating. And even after around 40 years now, that means it's nearly 50 years, we have a not that not that much wear on those traces. It is already there's a little 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 wear, but it is operating just smooth. It is completely smooth and there's no scratching or anything. It feels just nice operating this switch. It's not that kind of clunky switch we have on the older, older Multi-RV. You know, I just for you to listen to it again. but it is a really smooth switching action we are going through at this one. So listen again. You notice it is really, it's really silent using this multimeter, but it is a really good feel. It has a really good feel to it. It's not like you are heavy, you, it's not like you are using a cheapo multimeter where you have the uh, where I get the feeling that it is falling apart in your hands. So let's take a look inside the inside. I try to uh, my camera don't want to let us zoom a bit more. So we have to live with what we got. Um, in the inside, you can see some more of these potentiometers. It is just for, uh, I guess those are just for calibration purposes, as they are uh, not operatable from the outside. Down here at the bottom, I can see some resistors down here, right behind those potentiometers. But again, there's no clear way to say what they are doing. So, well, I guess we have to look at the manual to find that out. So that was the inside of the meter. I guess we should check out some of the uh, some of the measurement ranges. So sadly, I can't show you the ohms range on this one, but I guess we can take a look at volts and amps, which is quite nice in itself. And I guess again we can compare it to a more modern modern multimeter to see how accurate it still is. But at first I have to get those annoying nuts in here again. So, let's check at first some voltages, shall we? I would like to have some test leads. Where are they? They are not where I want them to be. Beautiful. Let's take those. Again, we take 
this crusty old Voltcraft for comparison. And place this one there. And that one to volts. And what I wanted to do is not working because of this stupid shielded plugs. I hate those. As I said, let's plug in those nice unshielded test leads. Wonderful. And maybe we should place this again at a slight angle. So just that you can see a bit better. Let's take this old Mundharmonica, whatever it is called in English. And switch to volts. 30 volts. Where is my trusty 9 volt battery test block? I have no idea. Kilo ohms, I don't want kilo ohms, I want volts. I'll just let's test this 1.5 volt battery which was in the meter just to see what is left in there. Oh, it is okay. It is still 1.5 volts and yeah, <laughs> that is the reason the ohms range is defective. I tried it before using this battery and thought the battery was dead because there was nothing happened at all. So as, we, as you can see we have 1.53 volts on the digital meter and we have um, well, just slightly above the 30 volt mark which is if you take a look at the scale, we have 1.5 volts at scale maximum, which will be at the 30 volt or at the 30 mark. Um, at 1.5 volts range, we have a resolution of 0 0.05 volts per little uh, indicator. This would mean we have... That's one... It's a bit off. We have 1.5, 1.515. So I guess we are 15 millivolts off. But I guess if you think about the age of the this meter, it is quite okay. As I said, if I don't, if I would not have my digital meters, I would definitely want to use one of those over any. El Cheapo Chinese meter like mm, do I have one actually I just wanted to show you one mm, wait a minute whatever I have no idea where it went and maybe that is <laughs> that is the best so in conclusion we can say this old ancient 70s uh, Hartmann and Brown Multavi 7 is just 50 millivolts off in the second finest voltage range which is quite remarkable so in conclusion what can we say the Hartmann and Brown Multavi 7 is for its age a really really nice meter I mean yes it is quite huge it is chunky it is it's quite heavy I would guess around one and a half kilos um, but it is quite accurate even for its age it has nice uh, over, uh, overload protections. It has a voltage and amps range which is enough for everyday use I guess. Um, you can measure ohms well except on this one because the ohms range is broken but um, if you get a, uh, a working one this would be really quite nice especially for this uh, because of this alternating volt and amp ranges so as I said, if you are measuring, like for example, if you're measuring the current going through a resistor and want to know how much voltage drop is occurring, you just connect the meter in series to the resistor 
and connect the voltage rain uh, the, the the voltage connector just over the resistor so you are perfectly able to uh, switch between amps and volts so that you can see how much current is flowing and which voltage drop is occurring just by switching ranges in a quarter of a second that is really really a nice feature which i would love to have on modern meters but this is not possible on modern multimeters because as you know the volt ranges is on the opposite side of the amp ranges as at least on most of the meters I know and if you have something like that well you're totally lost you just have to go through these menu buttons and whatever you, you have to go through all what is it wanting from me I hate this meter you have to be that quick at choosing what you want uh, I know there is a key combination to make it hold at, at this uh, no at, the, at this screen to to choose what you want it what, what you want from it but ah oh, this is bloody annoying I really prefer this handsome meters you can just do everything with them what you want and you can do it in a nice fashionable manner you don't have to go through all that fuss with uh, with menus and going through thousands of pages of owner's manual just flip it over and see ah i want to measure resistance what have i to do ah i have to uh, switch to ohms or ohms times 100 uh, place the correction um, place the correction of the indicator with this little set screw okay uh, i have to short circuit the ohms range and use this knob to correct the zero point and if this does not correct to zero oh okay i have to replace the battery that is all it is so, it's just so easy and nice and it's just i don't know why they don't build stuff like this anymore oh well maybe some someone will build a factory again <laughs> that would be nice i hope to see you again at tinkertubes lab until then goodbye